As I begin this demonstration today, I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to use watercolor pencils. This is new for me. I've done a demo piece on multimedia paper uh, just to see what it was like. Um, the piece I'm going to be using for this demonstration is a, a 300 pound watercolor paper cotton, so it's going to absorb a lot of water. That's one thing that you have to remember when you're using watercolor. Tape down the edges, even though this is 300 weight paper, probably not going to see a lot of buckling with it. I'm not sure as I begin. So I took this out of a watercolor block. I put tape around it to a foam board. And hopefully we're gonna not see very much buckling going on. With this multimedia paper that I tried a demo with, for a koi that I had photographed in uh, a pond at a landscaping place. I've got the actual reference photo up here, and then um, it's the one that I did this uh, demo project from. I wanted to just see what water, using watercolor pencils was like. I use watercolor paints, and I love gouache as well, but I haven't actually used the pencils until this. I've used them to sign my name, I've used them to put tiny little details into a watercolor painting, but not to do a whole project with. I haven't thought of them that way before. And I want to see if I can push them into that sort of um, function so that when I go out and maybe travel or go on a plein air painting event, instead of packing a whole tote bag full of things, I can just carry the box of watercolor pencils and a few brushes and uh, just keep things really minimal and light to carry out in the field. With this one, you can see that there is, um, if I hold it up, maybe you can see it better, uh, a little bit of roughness to the paper. And that is where I, while the paper was wet and I was lifting out some colors or blending in some colors, I used a blender type brush and it does damage the paper a little bit. I think it actually gives a pretty soft effect, so I don't think that's a total drawback. If you're going to frame this painting anyway under glass, then you probably wouldn't even notice it. But for the purpose of this demo, we're gonna try some heavier paper, watercolor paper, and see what we can come up with. Now, one of the things that I do like as I have watched demos on how to use these watercolor pencils is that you can use them directly on the paper and you can see I have drawn a um, sort of a, a ghostly fish shape of the fish in here. I didn't want a lot of water soluble graphite on there. This will absorb and um, go away as I paint, but I wasn't sure if it was going to leave a grayness that I didn't want with this. So I only did a very light sketch. I'm not even sure if you can see it, but it's the shape of the fish and a few of the lines that are going to be this rocky, mossy looking surface at the bottom. I like it that you can take these pencils and color directly on the paper or uh, let's say I'm going to just try a section of the orange part. I can take a brush, get it wet. I can work with this um, pencil this way. I have some color on the pencil. And in this area where there's going to be um, orange, red type colors, it will be underwater, so we'll have to blur it. But you see, you can paint with it like watercolor if you do that technique. That is probably what I'm going to do on the water around where you see the, the um, works here, the, where the water is. You can see the pencil marks still left from the pigment of the watercolor pencils in this area. I don't think that's really necessarily a detraction. That would be up to you what look you're going for. But in, since I've already tried it with this one, I want to see if I can use this watercolor on the pencil technique to get a smoother transition in the background. If it's not strong enough, I may have to rethink that. But let's see what we can do. I'm going to get started and then uh, we'll go. I'll, I'll come in and out to keep 
your time at a minimum to see how the progress is happening. As I'm getting this color in from the tips of these pencils rather than using them to color those spots, I just want to show you that sometimes this, this pigment is very intense. This is a high quality brand watercolor pencil, uh, which I think you should always buy high, the highest quality you can afford because the more quality that is in a product, the more expensive it's going to be. And watercolor pencils, sure, they can be used for lots of things. Um, and with students, you wouldn't want to invest so much possibly. But if you're going to give a product a fair trial, you really should buy the best that you can. These are so intense that at the tip of the fish's nose here, mouth, whatever you want to call it, I'm, I've placed a drop of water and I'm using just a paper towel to pick up that. So with watercolor pencils, you can lift just like you can with um, a regular watercolor. You can lift and soften on edges. And I'm not going to fret too much about edges right now because as, I, as you see, I'm going to be coming in with more of that dark um, blue color. Um, and now I'm going to be getting into some of these areas with the fins, the fish fins. You may be able to tell that I'm getting a little bit of gray in this water. That is from the water-soluble graphite that I'm using. This is also going to blend into all this color here. So what I want to do at this point is only to get the color I want for the fins. I'm going to show you another technique. The paper is wet and I'm going to come in with the watercolor pencil, which is dry, and put down some pigment here at the edge. Now, that watercolor pigment that I've just released from the pencil into the water, that is going to go wherever I tell it. The watercolor pigment on these pencils will stop at a dry area and they will flow into the wet areas. That's something that you need to be aware of whenever you're putting in other colors you also need to let the colors dry before you add a new color. If I put in, I'll just go ahead and try a little bit because I don't think it will hurt at this point. If I just touch a little bit of this color in and then I smear it around, it will only go where the paper is wet. It's not going to go anywhere else. So I am directing these colors not only by how I get it on the brush or by how I use a pencil, I'm also directing these colors with the brush and just clear water. As I'm doing the side of the fish, I want to show you another technique with watercolor pencils. As you can see in this painting that I did as a demo, I used the side of a pencil and yes I ended up scraping a little bit over this to blend it but I like the fact that I got some scale and texture looks on the fish so I'm going to rather than using the brush on the tip of these to make a smooth wash I'm going to now take some lavender and go over the rough surface of the uh, watercolor paper And if I put water on this and it leaves some marks, that will be fine because it will actually contribute. Oops, we got a little piece of paper there. It will contribute to the texture on the flesh of the koi. I am back from doing some dinner and the lighting has changed dramatically in my studio while this watercolor was drying 
and um, remember that I told you it's better if you can let it dry on its own let the uh, work keep happening between the watercolor and the paper and um, and then come back when everything's are dry to do what you need to do next and layer on top and not worry about where the pigment is going. Remember this water in this brush is controlling where the pigment goes. It's not going to go in any of the areas that are dry and so you are in control of that with just some clear water. I'm going to work on the koi now. I'll come back to these areas that look bubbly and rough. Um, I want to work on getting the more transparent look to the fins. If you want to see the actual reference photo, you can see where the fins sort of become transparent. There's one, there's one, here's the top, and this one blends into the rock here, so you can't see it very well. But we're going to use our imagination. I deviated from that reference photo with this photo when I was just trying out the watercolor pencils. This is the one that has the marks still left. It's on a multimedia paper and you can see these rough areas where the paper um, pulled up a little bit whenever I used a blender tool to um, lift and blend out some of the colors. Alright, so let's see. On this I'm going to be working on these areas to get the colors in. I'm going to get some of these edges uh, blended and I'm going to be using the technique of remember how it, we started with getting watercolor on our brush and going in this way instead of trying to color these on here. We will do some coloring with the fins probably in just a little bit but I'm going to work and see first if I can get all of this blended and get the shadow on the side of the fish and the, the, the fins to look more transparent. And then we'll come back and talk about what happened. Since this is 300 pound paper, you don't want to use the pencil up like this. You want to use it to, at an angle so that you don't damage the paper. And see that soft hazy effect that you get? I think that's really pretty. And finally, why don't we see if we can throw some water onto this. Let's take this is a technique I saw that I want to try. We'll take this and scrape off some bits of it. Maybe mist a little bit here and sprinkle this onto the wet area. And this is pure pigment, so it should start spreading. See some little spots here. You can move them a little bit. Of 
this is the first time I've tried this. I'm not sure when I'm ever, when I've ever done it or when it's really <laughs> a good addition to the painting. Is something to try as long as we're trying something new, right? And so this is the demonstration with watercolor pencils. It was on the 300 pound paper instead of this one on the multimedia paper where you could see more of the marks and the paper damage a little bit. I think when this one's dry, we'll see what it looks like um, as we end up here. Thanks for joining me for this um, little experiment into something new using the watercolor pencils and using them for a whole painting instead of just for a drawing.